you up to today? Well, we're filming outside, so excuse the wind. Um, but I'm learning to cast brass for the first time, and I'm looking to work within the means and the materials that I have myself, or that I have available to me. Now, I have a furnace, that's a new addition that you probably would have seen from one of my recent videos. Um, and I found I can get plaster of Paris. Now, I am probably going to go down the green sand method, so yes, I'm prepared for those comments. I'll work on that later. For now, I've got a couple of ideas. My current casting process involves taking uh, an object, or making my moulds directly on the laser and casting directly into them. But unfortunately, good old MDF just probably isn't quite up to the task of 1100 degrees. So I'm going to try plaster, and I've got a couple of ideas. One is I'm going to cast some small sheets of plaster and laser engrave them directly to make my moulds. Um, the other way I'm going to go is probably laser engrave wax and uh, make myself some wax masters on the laser. And then coat them in plaster and do lost wax casting. So I'm going to have an experiment and that's what these videos are about. They're about experimentation and finding what works. So let's go over the equipment I have here. I've obviously got plaster. I've got some yogurt containers here. And I've attached a speed controller to this uh, with a motor. So when I've poured my mould, I, I can vibrate the mould to get the air bubbles out without too much effort. Now, normally I would use a drill and a mixing attachment to mix this, but I don't want to mix too much air in. A bit like when you're making scones in the kitchen, which, if you like uh, scones and you want to see my recipe for those, leave me a comment and I'll do a scone recipe. Um, but anyway, don't want to mix too much air in there, so I'm going to use um, some offcuts from my laser cutting to uh, help that happen. In the meantime, my feet are getting eaten to death by concrete ants. They're a little bit nuts. I'm out here topless and shoeless today because it's about 38 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to go spray these ants down and we're going to get a plaster mix undergo. Alright, now because I'm lazy, I'm not bothering to actually measure the weight of the plaster. I'm just measuring it by volume. And I'm hoping one gram is about one milliliter in volume. I'm probably way off, but doesn't matter. I can go up to about a 50-50 ratio with this. So I'm going about 150 mil of water, which probably doesn't look that way from here, because we're not strictly level. So let's add a little bit more water in here. Bring us up to about 150 mil. Now it's quite hot out here today, and plaster sets as an exothermic reaction. So it's probably going to get quite warm and set quite quickly. My apprentice has just snuck out the back door to see what I'm doing too, so we might have some fun mixing this. My apprentice is going to uh, stand in while we do this too and help mix. So I'm going to give my apprentice a mixing stick. And we're going to start pouring water in and start mixing plaster. Yeah. Alright apprentice, time to mix mix. Here we go. Yeah. It looks like vegetable soup. Does a bit. Yeah. But we need to mix our water in. Here you go. Stick your mixing stick in and stir it all up. Oh, it looks like an ice cream. Don't eat it though. It's definitely not ice cream. <laughs> oh, ow. It's plaster of Paris. I'll get a cut. Okay. All right. We'll be back in a minute. Prentice has taken a quick break to uh, spray the ants off her feet, the hose. And I'll have to do the same thing with the flies shortly. But we're going to make our first little mix in here. And of course the motor is making things a little top heavy. So let's just pour this in and I hope that it balances out. Indeed it does. And we're going to give it some agitation for a bit. Ants. So here we go. Oh, wash yourself. Oh, there's lots of ants. We're going to spray my feet off too. That's handy. So now I can adjust the vibration on this to make it float around. There we go. We've got a levitating mold. So I'm going to give that a mix while that's running. Uh -oh. Try and get all the bubbles out. All right. We'll be back. Alright, I'm going to stop this for a minute while my apprentice does some mixing. Uh, we're going to try 100 ml of water this time instead of 150. Make a slightly thicker mix. Alright, back on goes the vibrator. Alright, 
Oh, the apprentice that. is helping pour stuff. Oh. I'm turn the vibrator off so we can hear what's happening. Right, so we have a slightly thicker mix in this one. Um, it was about the 200 mil mark to about 100 mil of water. No, we can't steal the blue tack off. We're going to put these right next to each other on the same plank so that they vibrate each other. All right, we're going to turn this back on and wait a few minutes. All right, so a couple of hours have passed. And these are looking a little bit more solid. This one's obviously the watery mix. There's a bit of water sitting on top, but it does look a little smoother. So when these dry properly, I'm going to demold them. Yep, and uh, we'll let them dry overnight and put them out in the Aussie heat again soon. Uh, probably tomorrow because the sun will be going down in about three hours and um, it's overcast at the moment. Anyway, once that's done, I'm going to shave them off or try and find a smooth surface to laser engrave and then we'll see how we go pouring metal into it. Anyway, let's, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Now I did a quick little bit of thinking um, shortly before I uh, brought these in to cool off overnight. They're quite hot, they've been sitting on hot concrete, but it's also the reaction. I wanted to smooth off all these bubbles from the surface, so I found a nice flat piece of pine, and I thought while it's wet and soft, I can use the plaster itself as a polishing compound, or as an abrasive even, and rub it on this piece of pine that I know is flat. As I keep going, I should be able to grind down all the inclusions and bubbles. Now this was the wetter mix, and then I'm noticing I've got some big bubbles near the surface. The uh, slightly thicker mix is actually creating quite a nice even surface. So that's going to get a nice finish, I think. So I'm going to keep working away at this until I get most of those air bubbles worked away from the surface. And there's some baby birds in the background you can probably hear if you are the sort that can still hear high frequencies. And they're ones we've been feeding to help them through this hot, uncomfortable summer. In fact, the camera is actually resting on the edge of the bird bath here, which I need to clean out in a minute. But I'll get these bubbles figured out, then I'll clean out that bird bath. Okay, so while I'm waiting uh, for my plaster to dry over on the vise over there, um, I've drawn up a quick design, which you'll probably see in a moment. Uh, it only took me literally about two minutes to draw this up. Uh, but basically, this is a two-part mould I'm drawing, making two of them. And uh, we have a ring that fits over a sheet that's 100mm by 100mm square. Uh, we're going to cut that out of MDF. We're going to pour some hot wax into that. And hopefully I'll end up with a 3mm wax sheet that I can experiment with laser cutting. And while I have the laser cutter fired up, I'm going to take one of my tea light candles that I bought for the unscented wax. I'm going to try and directly laser engrave one of them and see what happens. So, uh, yeah, here goes. Alright, so as a result of a technical malfunction, uh, mostly with my own body, uh, I didn't quite get the footage of these being cut. But I have some wax moulds now. The two part, they'll sit together like this. And hopefully, if everything works right, they'll allow me to cast a 3mm sheet of wax. So, the next step, I'm going to pull a couple of the tea lights out that I bought. And uh, I'm going to see if I can engrave them and just see if there's a setting that works well. Or if nothing works at all. I'm going to do that before I go to the trouble of casting the sheets. Alright, so we're up to the tea lights. Or tea lights, or... I don't know how to pronounce these or how they got their name. But anyway, I'm picking a couple of these out. I'm going to pull the wicks out of them. Now these are made with a compressed wax. They're just forced into here from granules. So I dare say this will uh, probably laser engrave differently to uh, how this wax will engrave once it's actually cast. So I'm going to chuck a couple of these in, see if I can uh, use raster mode to engrave some stuff on them and see how it behaves. Alright, so I've laser cut a test piece, um, and crucially it's left half the T off. Uh, this laser cutter for some reason has weird font anomalies sometimes. And I have sweat running down my glasses, that's not pleasant. So let's take a couple of these over to our laser cutter. 
and we'll just fly over here over to the noisy part of the workshop and you'll see my little hole here should be just about right to sit them on well, I hope actually it was meant to sit in there but apparently my measurements were a little off won't matter for this so what we have to do now and I think my bit of blue tack over here might have bent my autofocus pin again well, I think it has we're gonna to have to pause for a minute while I fix that Okay, so lesson learnt. Normally I use hold down screws in here and uh, the autofocus pin clears them quite nicely, but I got a bit lazy this time and I put blue tack in and a big blob of it got picked up on the tip. Not the end of the world. Uh, what we do need to do now is to uh, lower the bed slightly. So the camera will go down with the bed here. One of the reasons we've got to do that is where our wax is. We need to bring our laser cutter over, or at least the cutting head. We need to focus on that. We'll just check our pin is indeed working. There's a bit of sticky junk still left on here. We need to drop off carefully. All right, let's auto focus. All right, we might be able to turn some air on and start this job. Give me a moment to set up. Now, yet another one of the weird anomalies on this cutter is that occasionally it does funny things with text. And uh, despite all my obvious attempts at getting it to line up this way, you can see using D-text in uh, AutoCAD doesn't always work out right. We can see from that's what we should have and that's what we have. I haven't changed the program between these runs, but clearly we have two different outcomes. But anyway, this was at pretty much full air speed and I think it was about 43% speed um, to give reference um, that's the same settings on timber um, and that's 0.7% speed uh, to cut through so we, we can kind of do it it's not great but I'm gonna try the uh, gonna muck the settings around a little bit more and see what happens um, hopefully I'll come up with something that works we have some results. Right, so this is our first one you saw just before. This was at 100% uh, power, about 43% speed. Uh, so the next one I tried only half, that was at 100% power and 100% speed. Uh, worked a little bit better. So then I dropped the power back to about 50%. So it's 100% speed, about 50% power, and it's looking reasonably clean. Um, with a few drops on the side. So um, we had another go this time. Uh, this one we just saw moments ago. Uh, this was just loose in the holder and it was rocking with the air, which is what I think gave it that round effect. So this one I tethered down, uh, just with a blob of blue tack, and I let it cut the full circle. Um, so it's looking much cleaner, squarer text, less distortion, so that's good. Um, and this cut in here, I let that do it at 100% power at 0.7% um, speed and it's cut almost all the way through and it's done it nice cleanly um, aside from the bits where it didn't cut all the way through. So that tells me with a lot of air I can be forcing the wax out uh, before it has a chance to actually conduct its heat and everything else. So the next trick will be to try this on a sheet of wax. I might get lucky and I might be able to laser cut my wax masters straight off the laser instead of having to pour these into a mold first but uh, we'll see how we go I'm going to try out the sheets all right so dinner time is done with and uh, I've shut down all the noisy fans and stuff so the next job here is to uh, assemble my molds I'm just popping out all the screw holes here just popping them out so slightly tapered because of laser divergence and this one is apparently on the corner of the sheet uh, that was had lifted slightly it's usually why I use screws to um, hold down a lot of my stuff in the laser 
gets a much more consistent focal distance. You can hear my apprentice thundering through the house in the background, no doubt. All right, so when these are assembled, I'm going to use three mil screws to help assemble them. And I'm going to use some PTFE dry lube to help prevent the wax stick. I'm not sure if this will work, but it's easy to apply and it's a lot less messy than graphite, which is my backup plan. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these assembled. Got a bit of prep work to do, and I'm going to uh, spray these assembled moulds in a minute. I'm just going to check with a spirit level to see if I can get the area where I intend to pour the wax. Uh, level so I get a nice flat surface. Oh, if I can, I did these up tight when I poured brass, and I haven't loosened them up since. It might be about as good as I'm going to get here. So I can pour my molds here, and I'll put a packer under here because the screws are not the same level. But I'll put a packer, a known level packer under that, and it should get it roughly level. I should be good. So, oh, and we can't see that on camera. Let's come around a bit. Where are we? Where are we? Oh, I've lost track of things on a camera. This cheats me for not having a proper viewfinder. So, we'll get level here. Here's our spirit level. Hopefully I'll pack that out just right. In the meantime, it's time for the PTFE, which is a polyethylene lubricant or something like that. I can't remember... Uh, what the actual acronym stands for. I think it's like polyethylene terephthalate or something like that. Hopefully I can get the wax out of these. Could end up being uh, a bit of swearing involved if it's not the case. Alright, now I need to find something to melt a bunch of wax in. I think I can use my trusty old aluminium pot. I'll go and find it. Alright, so I'm about to uh, heat up some wax. I'm going to throw in all my rejects from before. I'm actually going to light up some flame here for a minute. And move all this out of the way. There's a bit of gas happening there by the look of things. Uh, working. I had to clean out my pot. I'm going to throw in some duds. I'm not sure how much this is going to take actually, um, so I've got a spare bit here, or a spare container, that I can use um, for wax, and I'm going to go and give it a bit of a spray, just because I don't know how well that's going to stick. Now off camera, or rather behind the camera here, I've got some, um, I've managed to uh, arrange the moulds nice and level. And uh, I'm just going to melt a whole bunch of these down as we go. And it's working quite well at this point. I think I can turn the heat right down. We don't need a lot for wax. We don't really want to wax fire in here, even though I've got fire extinguishers and everything. Um, it can be a bit of a hazard. I do have a big steel plate, or a lid rather, I can put over the top of that pot should that happen. I'm going to turn the heat off and walk away for a bit and let it cool off below flash point. We've got a bit happening in there. Oh, oh dropped one. I'll get it later. Alright, I'm going to be at this for a bit. Um, I've got to pick all the wicks out of this as well, so yeah. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. We've got our wax nicely melting away there. I've got a big pile of these, which I think might be aluminium. So they will go in my scrap bin as well, and I might um, melt them down as aluminium too later. But uh, we'll wait till this wax all gets melted, and then we'll come all the way over here, and we'll pour into the moulds. Alright, so it appears most of my wax is melted. And I've got a little mixing cup or pouring cup I'm going to use. I've got plenty of these, they're sacrificial. Um, <clears throat> I've got to do all this in a bit of a single move here, so you, you probably won't see much from that angle. So let's see if we can angle this up and probably help you out a little bit. You might be able to see me in the distance. I just don't want to burn myself. So let's get the wax turned off for the moment. Now we'll move light out of the way of my head slightly. 
um, that is probably better can you see from there we're not flaring out all right now how do we do this I'm going to pour these molds first and then the excess can go into the other mold so we will pour over this and I'll fill up my little cup here with wax pours distinctively like water when it's like this All right, not strictly level by the looks, but because this stuff shrinks a bit, I'm going to fill it right up to the top and hope it doesn't stick too much. All right, now we'll fill the rest up in our little excess container here. All right. So that's about half of those tea light candles. And it looks like we've got a fair bit of wax in here, though it is a little dirty because the pot was kind of dirty as well. Um, it's not going to matter too much because I plan on using this for lost wax casting. Um, actually, I've got things reasonably level, probably enough to make a ring anyway. So I guess we've just got to let this cool off now. And it's one of them things is if it's not broken, don't mess with it. And you can probably see here, we've got all the wax floating in the top here nicely. So I'm going to let this cool off and we'll be back in a few minutes. these in the fridge for the last couple of hours just to properly set everything doing pretty well apologies about the background noise you're gonna have to deal with that um, it is kind of hot at the moment and uh, a fair chunk of the country's on fire so uh, and just to get educate you though just to educate those of you who are not in Australia Victoria happens to be the section of Australia I live in and the total land mass in here equates to around about Texas so don't be deceived by the fact that we've only got about, uh, what, like five states. If you really call Tasmania a state, then you can count six. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on, particularly um, New South Wales. We've pretty much lost the whole Wollamai National Park. That whole area there has burnt. And that's around about the size of Michigan. So uh, to give you some kind of an idea of how big that is. Um, so yeah, and we've still got these guys up around here that are becoming a problem as well. So uh, they could still well be burning uh, when I head up to Korowa in, um, in March for the Korowa swim-in. So I've got to book my campsite soon. I've been waiting to see what's going to happen with the fires. So yeah. And as you can hear in the background, my apprentice is a little stir-crazy too. She's been stuck inside for... Uh, most of the day as well because it's been really just too hot so uh, I think it's time to dismantle these and see if the PTFE lube worked and uh, if we have a sheet and it looks like there's actually some pretty good clean edges um, except for this one a little bit but I think these will come out alright so I'm gonna get a screwdriver I'm going to demold these on camera because nobody will believe me if I tell you it came out perfectly and then I broke it one of the reasons I put the screws in the way I did is so that I didn't accidentally get wax on the threads, making uh, demolding a challenge. 
you know, school holidays are fun and all, but it's nearly 10 o'clock and my apprentice hasn't decided that it's time for bed yet. I think we're going to have to decide for her very shortly. So, get one of these out. I'm hoping the way this works is I'll be able to just take the back off and sort of twist it and create some shear force so that it shears along the lubricated surface. You have to excuse me, the language has gone a little bit out the window. And here is the night owl. My apprentice herself has come in to check out what I'm doing because she seems to know the cadence of my voice when I'm recording. This is cool okay, and as usual, right at a critical point in time where I really don't want to be distracted. So oh, let's get I see. Okay, okay, apprentice, just cool your jets for a minute while I do this, okay? I don't want to cut my finger off. Now I need to find the gap between the two sheets. Yep. Which is not easy to find here. But I see the map. You see that? Oh, you're Fires. looking. I see the you're looking at the map. Bushfires. Ah, we're looking at the bushfire map. My apprentice lost her speech is a little behind the game. Her reading, on the other hand, is way ahead of the game. Alright, now we've got this around here. Let's give it a little twist. See if it comes apart. Oh. Okay. So that part of the moulding worked very well. So I'm going to see if I can peel the sheet off. Um, and whether or not I'm going to be remoulding anything. Don't tap me in the back, apprentice. My apprentice is trying to help right at the moment. And her timing is extremely poor. You know what, let's fix the apprentice problem and we'll be right back. Okay, now that the um, distraction is sorted, I'm going to fill around in my drawer of bits and I think I might try with one of these things. Might have a shallower angle and less of a chance of slicing my finger off. Ah, I have a feeling this is going to be the case for most of this sheet. Um, I doubt I'm going to get this off. Let's adjust our camera. I might end up having to cut this in situ, I think. Yeah, we're not going to get this off the backboard. So uh, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And I might laser cut probably through all the layers. So um, it does beg the question, after I've cut this, can I actually separate the piece out for a lost wax cast? I think I'm going to need to use something better for a mold release than the PTFE lube. But uh, I'll demold this one and we'll see what happens. Next day, and uh, I've been waiting on my plaster to set, and uh, it's sitting on the concrete, which I have to move my feet off. Um, should be plenty enough to harden it out here. It's like 40 degrees outside today, <clears throat> and our local magpies are squawking for food, waiting for us. But uh, yeah, it's hot enough to melt tar, and I'm pretty sure it'll be hot enough to melt wax here. So this might be an option for, um, yeah, demolding, or rather melting the wax out of my plaster moulds. I'm going to turn these over for a bit and leave them for a couple more hours, but hopefully they'll be good enough for the laser soon. Okay, so we're back in the junk heap that is my desk. Um, now, we've got uh, these two bits of plaster that I've sat in the sun, and we went through yesterday's massive uh, bushfire weather at 41 degrees Celsius I think and these are been sitting in the concrete and they're all quite hard so we're gonna see if I can laser engrave these it's got a slightly different pitch to it right but yes um, and I want to stop to pay my respects to uh, yet another firefighter that was lost in a vehicle rollover um, during the bushfires uh, currently East Gippsland, which is not too far away from me, um, is pretty much on fire. Pretty much everything is. So, yeah, if there's a bit of a somber tone at the moment, uh, that's why. It's Christmas Eve. Oh, not Christmas Eve. It's New Year's Eve. My brain's not working real well, and there's a lot of stress involved to that. And, of course, with MS, I'm trying real hard to keep the stress levels down. So I don't have another attack. And sort of the feeling of being a little helpless and not able to really do too much about the situation. Um, especially when there's like 4,000 people sitting on the docks at Malakuta waiting for their town to burn. Um, so yeah. 
Anyway, let's move on. So this is the design I drew up last night. You probably will have seen the time lapse. I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this video. Um, we can probably zoom in a little bit here and see it in better resolution. I'm going to just try and engrave this pattern into the plaster and see what happens. Okay, it's a bit noisy in here, but this actually worked far better than I had expected. It's actually engraved really well. So this looks actually really promising. Um, so the next bit's going to be figuring out how to make this uh, into a mold. But I do know that I can, I can cut it. And it looks like the beam's actually cut quite deeply into the plaster here. So I don't know how deep that's actually cut. So... Um, I think I'll do some more experiments, but it could be that if I can make plaster sheet, I might be able to cut into that. Or I might be able to buy a plaster board, also known as drywall, and cut that into shape. I'm going to have some experimenting, and I'll be back once I've figured that out, because this video is getting quite long now. Alright, so I've been busy since we last looked at this. Um, I've busted open some of these moulds to see how far through plaster is cutting. It's cutting about three and a half, four millimeters through, which is not too bad. That means I could probably make a two-part mold on the laser. And I've done a few of these uh, at various cut depths, um, but yeah, this should illustrate pretty well. And uh, in cutting a thin slice off my uh, my uh, experimental block, I've discovered it is still quite moist on the inside, so I'd probably need to bake these before I cast them. Uh, what I have done. I've made a couple of acrylic masters here. I'm going to see if I can cast a mold using them as well. Uh, that might be the easier process. I'm going to start with an open back mold, but uh, I might end up actually putting a piece of steel on the back of it as well. I don't know yet. I'm going to experiment, but uh, it's going to be a long day. All right, so uh, I'm going to try a different approach here. I've got my two acrylic molds. I've uh, coated them with a bit of sewing machine oil and I'm sitting them in some plaster. I'm going to let that set and I've got my speed controlled agitator working here as well to vibrate the bubbles out. I should be able to shave this down a little bit once it's set and um, remove those and then put it in the oven to bake. So uh, hopefully we'll be by the end of today we'll be casting some brass into these. And I found out of experience open back moulds were the easiest to start with to see how it would behave. Uh, after that, then I'll probably get into making some kind of a two-part mould. 
All right, it looks like my mold is set. Um, so I'll give it a bit of a squeeze here and we'll pop that out of the mold shortly and then we'll remove our masters. Then we can put this in the oven to bake. And hopefully these come out. Uh, in my test with acrylic and sewing machine oil, they did come out fairly easy. I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll see. All right, so they released quite easily. Um, the problem is I had bubbles building up underneath them. So I guess I'm going to have to do this the other way up. I'm going to have to uh, stick them to the bottom of the mold, glue them down and pour the plaster on the top. I think I'm going to have some lunch first. Okay, so nearly an entire day later, um, I have these two molds. This being the best of the two, they look a whole lot better and I need to be careful with that. I think I'll dry that out and then I'll finish that little bit. Um, but I used sewing machine oil. This one I probably used a little bit too much oil and it kind of floated up a bit. But I put these upside down in the base of a plastic cup and I mixed the plaster a little bit thicker this time. Poured it in and left my vibrator on maximum until they sort of fell in there. And this, um, this little bit poking up here um, that's designed to accommodate the tritium gas tube. There is a slight indentation um, to give me a guide where to actually drill a hole in the top here. Um, but so far these might be promising. So these are going to go off to the oven and uh, bake for a little while. And maybe later tonight we can put my entire day's work <laughs> to some kind of good. Uh, because at this point in this video we're about a week into this project. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's slow progress of learning stuff from scratch but I like to, to detail my learning process sometimes as well um, therefore I don't look so professional which is I don't know not the aim of this channel anyway aim of this channel is a bit of a legacy for my kids namely my oldest kid um, who I don't get to see a whole lot so you know what maybe I can yeah maybe she can see something from this I haven't planned this part of the script as you can tell so Anyway, let's get back to the task at hand, put these in the oven and dry them off. Alright, our moulds have been in the gas oven for about, at about 200 degrees C for about an hour. And they're quite dry, I'm not sure if they're going to be dry enough. I've got them sat in this little um, stainless box this time, so that any overflow is not going to land on the ground. But just in case, I've got the barriers set up all the same. I've got this tape down to the vise because it's too big to fit in there. Um, it does balance on its own. The tape is just a precautionary measure. Um, we have our original bit of brass in the furnace. And we've got a whole bunch more 38 specials in place. And we've got our fan running. Um, also got another camera person this time so that uh, I don't have to get my hands dirty and worry about camera angles. Um, and we've got our decent uh, tongs that are multi-purpose and uh, yeah we'll be pouring some brass when we're up to temperature all right so um, I've switched camera person now and uh, we've just hit a thousand and forty five degrees and um, we've got a bunch of 38 special shells in here they've just started to actually melt and wriggle down in the crucible so I'm going to give them a bit of a check up and see if we're actually looks like we're starting to get quite liquid in there I'm not going to stick my head over the top of that. This stuff can be a little, um, a little toxic. But we're pretty close to uh, getting ready to pour in a minute. Um, I'm going to get my handy dandy tongs out and um, I'm going to pour into these molds over here very shortly. Uh, so yeah, I'm waiting till we hit about 1,075, 1,080. Uh, that was the pour temperature last time that worked quite well. Hopefully my molds don't explode. And it means it's time for me to go and put some goggles on. Alright, so we've just come up to temperature about 1080. I'm hearing the relay click in and out. And yes, I'm well aware I'm horribly dressed for doing this. I'm being very, very careful too, because that makes it safe, I guess. Uh, but I do have these up, and I've got my shields at my legs. And I've got various other procedures in place. But uh, I don't want to hang around too much, so let's get this poured. So this will be some of the copper um, burning off in these. So I'm going to go for a pour and hope the slag doesn't get in the way. So I haven't skimmed the slag. 
All right. Let's see how we go here. Yep. Well, it's casting off a lot in the mold, so I don't know what I'll have left. It doesn't look real good in there, but I think I'm going to melt a little bit more brass while I've got it up to temperature. And I'll let those cool down for now. Alright, well I'm going to make a couple of ingots out of some of the leftover, all waiting that, for that to cool off. So, um, this has been going for a bit. I've put some more brass in, plus all my slag. I'm going to go into this aluminium pot, which I hope doesn't melt through. There's a bit of wax residue in there too, which we kind of expected. So if that doesn't die off in a minute, I'll put a bit of water in there, which we probably will need. Right. Which of course wax fires can sometimes make them worse. <laughs> anyway, I'll let that go for a minute. We'll see what sort of quality brass we got out of it. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to crack these moulds open. So we'll, we'll cut to that and um, we'll have a crack. Alright, so it's time to um, pull the brass out of this and see what result we get. I'm not expecting anything great looking at this, but you know, with metal casting, you can get some pretty horrible looking things that come out looking really beautiful. So I don't know. Um, this one I pretty well overshot, and I think there was a skerrick of moisture in here, and I think it just, well, the mould did crack, so that's all right. And, well, the actual casting surface stayed intact. We've got sort of a loose form there, but, yeah, I think I'll be remelting that one for sure. Um, try this one. See if I can get that out. That one's sort of, I think I need to dry my moulds a bit more. That uh, it's definitely gassed off and bubbled up. But uh, crucially, unlike the MDF, the mould actually survived this process. So I think I'll do a couple more. This is cracked. Um, I think I'll do a couple more and I'll dry them for a lot longer. And that might work. But we're getting closer. I should have a good product in the near future. But yeah, so the, ne the next video hopefully will be a successful one, but this was an experiment to see how far I could get with what I have right now. So we'll see you all next time.